Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Daily Dose with Nurse Alice. On today's episode, we're going to talk about um, telemedicine and what that is. And some of you are wondering, with COVID-19 and the way that it is, many of us have not been able to see our primary care providers, but that's not to mean that we shouldn't see our providers. So joining the conversation today, I have Dr. Sarpoma Sepaboachi, who is a board-certified family medicine physician. She's a public speaker and global maternal child health expert. She's traveled the world. Um, she's best known for some of her international work. Um, she's been featured by uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, and she's been on national public radio. So please welcome to the show, Dr. Sharpoma. Hi, Dr. Sharpoma. Hi, how are you? Thank Good. you so much Thank you. for the show. Thank you. We're so excited to have you. So I know you're a busy physician. Um, a lot has changed with COVID-19. I mean, you also have this great body of international work. Um, can we start with that? What is it like? Um, and what kind of things have you done internationally taking care of people? It all started while I was an undergraduate at UCLA. I was studying world arts and cultures, and I was also studying international development studies. And that kind of got me to kind of think, you know, if I want to be a doctor, I, I need to understand my patients and where they come from. You know, at the time I was living in Los Angeles, and we have so many different cultures living there. So I knew I wanted to at least learn Spanish. So I ended up going to medical school in Cuba. So that kind of opened everything up for me. And with that, that was amazing. While I was there, I was able to dance with the National Dance Company. And I was also able to study music and I actually took some opera classes. So that was pretty cool. Fast forward all the way after I graduated, I was able to be the director of an international global organization called The Birthing Project. And I'm still the director today. And our biggest thing is to send birth kits out all over the world to women that are delivering actually without doctors or even midwives. So that's the gist of what I do on the international side. On the local side, I am a family medicine physician. I mainly see um, children, adolescents, and women. And that's actually something, you know, with COVID, as you saw that a lot of the clinics have closed. So a lot of people are very confused. They don't know what to do. They don't know if they should, or if they're able to still get their mammogram, if they're able to still get their pap smear. And so that's why you can kind of see me. I'm in my office. And so when you are a family med, when you are a physician nowadays, your office becomes a lot of different places. This is my bedroom. <laughs> okay. So so that's kind of, but you know, in the, but in essence, um, with all the work that I do, no matter if I'm in another country or if I'm, you know, locally, the most important thing is really connecting to the patient. And so that's kind of, you know, it doesn't matter. I can be in another country or I can be here. I still really like to connect with my patients. And so if anything, um, being inside somebody's bedroom as well and talking with them about their issues and kind of how they understand disease is really important to me too. Right. And so thank you for that. And obviously you're meeting people where they are. And so interestingly enough, as healthcare professionals, that was the one piece that we never really get to see. Right. So we're taking care of people. They're coming to our offices, clinics and hospitals, and we see them in this one view under this certain lens. But now uh, because of COVID-19 and because of uh, the need to quarantine or social distance and avoid, quote unquote, unnecessary trips, we now are seeing patients in their homes. Absolutely. Um, so we're getting an idea of, you know, what does their home really look like? What is, you know, what's their, getting a sneak peek into the, more of their lifestyle, if I'll say. Um, but, you know, one of the things that viewers are very interested in is when, you know, the, the quarantine began, we thought it would only be temporary. We delayed visits that we said weren't urgent, um, but it's been some extended period of time. What maybe we thought was one month turned to three months now, six months, and who knows how long this will will go, especially now that we're going to be having a flu season coming in, which yes. could exacerbate if you know, in, and, and also an intes anticipation of a second wave. So, first off, if I can maybe get some advice from you for our viewers, uh, you mentioned things like your mammogram or those annual annual wellness visits. Um, should people still be making appointments with their providers to have those done or um, is telemedicine and seeing your provider virtually enough? When is that tipping point of going in the office, 
yeah. or doing the telemedicine visit? So, so this is such a, a, a great question. I really appreciate you asking me this because I found that a lot of our patients decided they weren't even going to call. They were just, there was a lot of anxiety about when we should go back to the clinic. A lot of the fears were, is the idea of the asymptomatic carrier of COVID. So there was a lot of fear about going to the office. So the first thing you should do is number one, every office has a website. And on the website, we are required by law to update it and tell you what we are doing as far as to make sure that the office is safe for you. We also, in most um, clinics, it doesn't matter if it's private, if it's public, or if it's like, academic, they're going to put down what are the type of illnesses that are, are able to be seen in an outpatient mm -hmm. basis, meaning what are the types of things you can go to the doctor for during, at this time? COVID. The wellness and the well checkups are still essential. The only caveat to this is that the first part of that visit is going to be a telemedicine visit. So you, it might be telemedicine in your car, you waiting for the waiting for the doctor or to do your labs. You'll do that first 10 minutes or 15 minutes in the car. The second part might be in the lab. Or the second, part might, the second part might be you getting that referral to get your mammogram. So no, mammograms, pap smears, colonoscopies are not canceled. The only thing that is different now is the way that we are doing the referral and the way that we're discussing it with you. So please, I, my biggest thing is just to make sure that you're just not, um, you're not falling through the cracks because a lot of people are oh, well, you know, my doctor must be so busy, you know, he or she might be in the hospital, so I don't want to bother them. No, please bother us. Please let us know because it just becomes a bigger problem if we're not getting our preventive care done first. So all of a preventive care is essential care because it promotes wellness. So that's what we really want to make sure you know. Right. And you bring up some, such great points. So guys, if you're someone, maybe you have diabetes, high blood pressure, you're on the cusp of those things, it's still very important to connect with your healthcare provider. Um, even if you're not sure, uh, that something is a problem. You need to collaborate because what might seem okay to you or something you're just going to quote unquote deal with really might be a bigger problem where you might need further care. Um, and I'll say this, there are studies out there that show that there are people, more people are experiencing strokes at home for yes. fear of going to their healthcare provider because of COVID-19. So our healthcare system, our doctors, our nurses, um, everyone is out there to help you stay well and stay safe. So, uh, but we can only do that if you communicate and work with us. So telemedicine is a bridge to your healthcare provider in the interim until we can get back to those daily or routine visits where you're going into the clinic. Now, Dr. Sarcoma, if so, for someone, let's say um, they do have a sick visit, they actually do need to come in and see their provider. Um, can you let our provider, our viewers know what's changed a little bit and what they can expect if they're actually having to go in to a clinic? Yes. So we, we want to say, number one, please don't be alarmed. So we are wearing PPE. So PPE is the protect, pr protective um, gear that we wear. Basically, we're going to not only have our white coats on, we're also going to most likely have scrubs on or just regular clothes on. On top of that, we will have the M95 mask. On top of that, we will also have a shield. This is for both of us. This is for you and this is for us. It doesn't mean we have COVID if we are wearing that. It doesn't mean that we are exposing because we do have to change um, this a couple times a day and we are washing our hands and we're still doing that. So that's the biggest thing that you'll see. So please don't be alarmed by that when you see that. And everybody's going to be wearing that, not just doctors. You're going to also see the greeters wearing that. You're going to see the nurses wearing that. So that is just to let you know that we're taking your health really, really, you know, to a really high regard. Number two is, um, Unfortunately, because of this time too, we are limiting um, the amount of face-to-face um, -face contact. So what you might find is you will have you will talk first to a triage nurse, and then you might then talk to the regular nurse that you are used to talking to, and then a, another healthcare provider. And it could be your healthcare provider, or it could be someone part of the, the healthcare team. Because that is actually the good thing that came out of um, COVID is that we now are deciding to work in a, a bigger teams and really trying to make sure that every every time that we do have a patient that does have the symptoms, that the right 
public officials are called so we can make sure that we can get them right on their way to the hospital if they have symptoms and are at, at, a, at a risk level that they need to be hospitalized. So that's the other thing. And the other thing is sometimes you might find some of your visits in the waiting room on the phone, and then it, we will determine if that's something that you need to be actually seen by your healthcare provider. So that's pretty much the biggest thing, the biggest difference. But mm -hmm. um, I, we know that there was a time when everything was closed. Things are now opening up now. So that's right. pretty Yes, guys. So don't be alarmed. This is all for everyone's protection. Yeah. Uh, some of the things, important things that you'll need to do, uh, obviously washing your hands, uh, making sure that you're wearing a mask when you go see your provider. If you're having ill symptoms, coughing, fever, and those type of things, please let your healthcare provider know before you head on over to the office. And some folks are actually waiting in their cars yes. and their doctor's uh, offices are calling them when to come in because we're no longer waiting in the, in the waiting area now because we're trying to limit uh, exposure to other folks. But it's all for your protection, so know that. So if, you t if everyone takes a precaution, we can do, be good at hopefully ending uh, this you know, COVID-19 uh, epidemic that we're having. Yes. So guys, that has been some great information um, and some tips for you uh, so you can continue your health and wellness journey and still stay connected to your healthcare provider. It's very important. We'd like to thank Dr. Shar Palma for all her great international and, and work here in the United States and for these great tips. And Dr. Shar Palma, can you tell our viewers where they can find you if they want to connect more? Yes, absolutely. I am on all social media um, at at Dr. Sarpoma, MD. And then my website is www.drsarpomamd.com. And you can see all the work that I've done and some wellness tips and videos um, that you can do while you're in your home to help you during COVID. Thank you so much, you guys. You've heard it from Dr. Sarpoma. You've heard it from myself. Um, you need to make sure you're taking really good care of yourself. We provided you some great tips. Um, but for more tips, stay connected to Daily Dose with Nurse Alice. Please go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Ask Nurse Alice. Watch this video. Share it with a friend. There are other great videos there. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and write in. We want to hear what you want to hear uh, and want to talk about the things you want to talk about. So, you guys, until next time, wash your hands, wear your masks, make good choices, be kind to one another, and until next time, live well, my friends. Bye.